Hi everyone, welcome to Tech Ravers and this brand new Emudeck emulation tutorial. I've done a few in the past and they've always been very well received by you. This time however we're doing it on the ROG Ally X with Windows 11 on it. That's right, we're taking a break from the Steam Deck and its Linux based operating system to focus on this brand new Windows handheld instead. And note this, even though I'll be using this ROG Ally X in this video, this tutorial will work regardless of which Windows based handheld or computer you're using. So if you're ready to dive into emulation on your Windows device, let's get started. So in this tutorial I thought we would go through the essential steps to get you started with emulation on your new ROG Ally X or any other Windows handled as quickly as possible. There are numerous features, tools and tweaks to play around with to further enhance your emulation experience, but those will be covered in future videos. I also want to mention that I'll be doing everything directly on my Windows handled here. I won't be using my computer at any point. However, there are three things I recommend that you have ready before starting this video. A wireless mouse and keyboard that you can connect via Bluetooth to your device and perhaps most importantly a hard drive or USB stick with your game dumps and BIOS files prepared. Once you have those things, let's dive in and get started. On your device, open the browser and go to emudec.com. Once there, click on download at the top or scroll down until you reach the different icons corresponding to the system you're installing emudec on. This time we'll choose Windows. Emutech will then ask you if you want to join their Patreon to support the developers, which you can do if you wish, but for now I'm selecting download for free. Open the downloaded file named emudech.cmd directly from your browser if you prefer, or locate the file on your device and start it from there. The CMD file will open Windows command prompt and begin asking for permission to make certain changes to your device, such as switching to faster DNS servers if needed, granting PowerShell administrator rights, and more. Allow the script to make these changes to facilitate the download of the Emudeck installer. And once the Emudeck installer has been downloaded, it will open automatically and begin searching for updates. Allow it to check for those updates, which can take up to a minute. Once finished, all you Steam Deck owners will probably be very familiar with this start page. It's time to choose whether to go with Easy Mode, which lets Emudeck install everything automatically, or Custom Mode if you want to select what gets installed. I always choose Custom Mode and that's what I'll be doing today as well. Emudeck will scan your device for drives and list them here. I only have the built-in storage on my ROG Ally X, but if you have other drives, whether internal or external, they will be listed here as well. So select on which drive you want to install your emulators and ROMs and click Next. On the next page you choose which device you have Windows on. You can select one of the suggested devices, and I'll choose ROG Ally even though I have the ROG Ally X. Alternatively you can simply choose Windows PC from the option below, or indicate that you have another Windows handle that's not listed above. Next it's time to choose which emulators you want to install. If you're unsure which emulator you need for a particular system, you can always look it up online, but most of them are well known by now. Alternatively you can simply install them all if you're unsure what you'll need in the future, since they don't take up too much storage anyway. The next page might look similar, but this time you choose which emulators you want Emudeck to optimize for you. For the most part I recommend selecting all the emulators that you choose to install, since you can always make manual adjustments later. However, I'm opting out for Pegasus here because I won't be installing that frontend. I usually use Emulation Station as my frontend. Next you choose if you want RetroArch to create a save state when you exit a game, so that you will automatically start from that exact point when you go back in the game. This feature only works for RetroArch, which means it applies to the system listed on the screen. And next you can log in with your Retro Achievements account to set that up. If you're not familiar with Retro Achievements, it's an account that you can get for free from retroachievements.org and setting it up will allow you to collect achievements for all your retro favorites, thus expanding their replayability.
The next few pages are all about aesthetics and highly personal settings related to aspect ratios and filters. You can easily toggle the on and off buttons to see what difference each option will make in game. I'll skip through this part a bit quicker, but I suggest that you take your time to choose how you want it. However, you can always change these settings later if you change your mind. When you reach this page it's time to choose how you want to launch your games. You can either use Emulation Station or Pegasus Frontends or through the Steam library. If you opt out of the Steam library you will get a prompt reminding you that you will still need to have Steam installed because you will need to use Steam ROM Manager to launch the emulators from Steam and not directly from Windows. This is necessary for cloud sync and controller hotkeys to work. If you don't care for these features you can ignore this warning. You'll then have to choose your default theme for EmuDeck, or in other words, how you want EmuDeck to look. And lastly, before we get to the summary page of what we're about to install, we can choose the resolution at which we want our games to be played. The ROG Ally X can handle most systems upscaled to at least 1080p, but weaker handhelds might want to drop down a step to 720p. I'll also leave PlayStation 3 at 720p for now. And the next page is a summary of what Emudeck will do for you. Remember it will install Emudeck under its own folder on your selected drive. It won't just install everything directly under the root directory as it might seem here. Then when you're ready click on finish and let Emudeck download and install everything for you. There might be a few pop-ups or prompts during the setup that require you to give Emudeck permission to install certain things. Just allow everything that pops up. Eventually the Emudeck installer will finish and it will display essentially the same warning as before. Make sure to read and follow any final instructions, then click next to complete the setup process. Now all your emulators have been installed and configured. The next step is to add our games, BIOS files and finally add our emulators to Steam using Steam ROM Manager as per earlier warning, so that we can fully utilize Emudeck's configurations. Click on manual copy. And this is where you bring out your USB stick, external hard drive, CD or floppy disk with the game dumps you want to use and transfer them to your handheld. With your external media of choice connected, click the minus sign in Emudex installer to hide it for now. Next, find your external drive where you have your games. Mine is called external and is located under D. Then open Emudex installations folder on your device, I install it under C so I have a folder there called emulation. Inside that folder there's a folder named ROMs with several subfolders indicating where to play specific games. I'm starting with Wii U so I will locate that folder first. Now it's a simple game of drag and drop. Move all the games you want from your external hard drive to your handheld, making sure to place them in the correct folder. If you're unsure which game files belong in which folders or where to place BIOS files, Emudeck has a comprehensive cheat sheet, cheat sheet, cheat sheet, can't say that, cheat sheet, cheat sheet, with all the information you need. It details what is required for each specific platform and where it should go. I'll link to that page in the video description, of course. Cheat sheet. Once you moved all the games and BIOS files to their correct folders, go back to the Emudeck installer and click on Next. Now choose whether to launch your ROMs from the Steam library or from the frontend you chose. You can change this later, but since I transferred a very small library of games, I'm going for the recommended Steam library option. The next page will summarize what Steam ROM Manager will do. Click Launch Steam ROM Manager and wait for it to launch. I clicked Finish on the next page as well before Steam ROM Manager launched, but you can just wait for it to launch and you don't have to click Finish. If you see an update available prompt you can just close that for now. And then when you want Steam ROM Manager to search for your games and add them to your Steam library click on add games to the bottom left. Read the information if you want and then click on parse. 
When Steam ROM Manager has finished downloading artwork for your games and emulators, you can either replace the artwork if you're not satisfied or deselect any emulator or game that you don't want to add to your Steam library. Once you feel ready, click on Save to Steam, wait until you see the message Done Adding Removing Entries, then you can close down Steam ROM Manager and the Emudeck installer as well. If you're done with your external drive, you can remove it now. Then launch Steam so that you can start one of the emulators you just installed and test it out. In your library, scroll all the way up and you'll notice a new category called Emulation, where all the emulators you chose from before are now listed. Go ahead and try one out. I'm testing Simu, which is the Wii U emulator. From here, Steam will launch the emulator and you will manually have to choose which game to launch from within the emulator. If you prefer a more streamlined and console-like experience, you can use a frontend like Emulation Station or Pegasus. Personally, I don't mind launching it this way on a Windows handheld, but that's just me. As you can see though, Wind Waker HD for the Wii U launches without any issues. My controller has already been mapped and the game is ready to be played at 1080p. I thought we should also take a look at the most demanding system while we're at it. PlayStation 3 requires a few additional settings before we can play our PS3 dumps. But don't worry, most of it has already been taken care of through the Emudeck installer. Go ahead and open RPCS3, which is the PlayStation 3 emulator, and you will be prompted by this message. You can read the information if you want, but the essential part is that you need the official PlayStation 3 firmware. Fortunately, this is not a problem, as Sony provides it for us. All you need to do is search for PS3 software in your handheld's web browser using any search engine and click the link How to Update PS3 Console System Software. Scroll down to the section Update using a computer and click on Download PS3 Update. Your browser might, like mine, flag the file as potentially dangerous, but go ahead and allow the download to complete. Reopen your PS3 emulator or PCS3, go to File in the top menu and then select Install Firmware. Locate the firmware file we just downloaded from Sony and let the installation complete. Once done, you can launch any game that you might have transferred earlier. I'm trying Skate 3 right away. But as I mentioned earlier, PS3 is definitely the most demanding system you can emulate on your handheld. Note that every game needs to go through a time-consuming process of compiling PPU models. The duration varies depending on the game you're trying to run. Fortunately, this is only necessary the first time you start a game though. Subsequent launches will be much faster. The cool thing though is once you get past the compiling process and start playing, you'll notice that Emudeck has set everything up for you. The controls work as they should and you're ready to play the game. The only thing you need to focus on now is how to tackle your next challenge in-game. And that's it for my first tutorial of Emudeck on Windows Handhelds. I hope this video helped you get started with emulation and that you enjoyed watching it. If you did, please give it a thumbs up to show your support. And feel free to comment down below if you have any questions and I'll be happy to help you out there. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already for more tutorials like this in the future. Thanks a lot for watching, Tech Cravers out!